Hi guys, I finally got my hands on Dell's new XPS 13 2-in-1. Specifically, this is the 9310 model with a 360 degree hinge and Intel's latest XE graphics. Is it worth $1250? Earlier this year, I reviewed the Dell Inspiron 7490 with the NVIDIA GeForce MX250, which launched for $1150. Is the latest XPS 13 2-in-1 worth the additional cost? Can it even game? Stay tuned for more. Before I get started, I wanted to let everyone know how grateful I am for all your support, as I'm now celebrating my goal of reaching 2,000 subscribers. Let's see if this video can get us to 3,000. So hit the subscribe and bell icons and leave a like or comment, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. I also created a Patreon page, so if this review really helped you out, please show your support. I'll leave a link down in the description below. Now let's talk about what you get. Right off the bat, if you care about getting the latest XE graphics, you'll need to upgrade to the 1250 version. In it, you'll get 8GB of RAM, 256GB of storage, and the EVO labeled 11th Gen Intel Core i5-1135G7 CPU. But I spent another $200 to double the RAM and storage to 16GB and 512GB respectively, which brought my total to $1450. Why the upgrade? Well, to me, 8GB of RAM just isn't enough for gaming. If you don't intend to game though, 8GB of RAM is perfectly adequate. Additionally, you can upgrade the screen for $500 more if you need a resolution higher than 4K on a 13-inch laptop. And you can max out the RAM to 32GB and the storage to 1TB through Dell if needed as well. And since neither the storage nor RAM is user upgradable, you'll need to really think hard about how much you'll need at the time of purchase. But yeah, I think doubling the RAM to 16 gigabytes and doubling the storage to 512 gigabytes for only $200 is a pretty good deal. Additionally, you could always add a 512 gigabyte micro SD card for some cheap but slower storage. See a link down below for my recommended SD cards. Which brings us to the ports. We have a Thunderbolt 4 port with power delivery, a headphone jack, another Thunderbolt 4 port with power delivery, and a micro SD card slot. I love Thunderbolt as much as the next guy, and I'm really happy to see micro SD card slots, but I'd love to not have to use dongles for my USB Type A accessories. Don't worry though, unlike Apple, Dell does include a USB C to USB A dongle in the box. Moving to the form, it's very small and compact. Weighing in at only 2.9 pounds, it's lighter than the Razer Blade Stell's 3.3 pounds. The XPS's hinge feels perfect as well. It doesn't wobble that much when I aggressively move the laptop or decide to tap on the screen. The 2-in-1 aspect of this laptop is great as well for those who want to fold their laptop in weird ways. But if you're weird just like I am, I can definitely recommend this laptop for those students or professionals who need a high quality laptop that also weighs less than 3 pounds. Regarding the speakers, they sound pretty good to me. Are they upward firing? No. Do they have deep bass? No. Are they sufficient for a super light laptop? Yes. They get super loud without distortion. So I wanted to quickly discuss bloatware. I'm not a fan of Microsoft Office free trial pop-ups during the install and immediately after the install, nor am I a fan of McAfee ads. So if you're buying this laptop for someone like your mom, please make sure you de-bloat the laptop first. Check out Chris Titus Tech's channel for some awesome deep bloat tutorials and let me know if you'd be interested in seeing me do an install of Linux on this thing. Moving to the display, the Full HD IPS touchscreen is very bright. The HDR400 certified panel is rated for 500 nits of brightness and gets a 1500 to 1 contrast ratio. What does that mean? You can watch HDR content with highlights 40 times brighter and blacks 10 times darker. Additionally, the monitor has Dell's EveSafe technology to reduce harmful blue light while maintaining vivid colors. And as I said earlier, you can upgrade to the UHD Plus display if you absolutely need it, but I don't recommend it for the cost. Windows scaling just isn't that great. The bezels around the display are super thin though. Way to go Dell for being the innovator of thin bezels. And Dell was still able to fit a webcam above the screen that still supports Windows Hello Facial Login. And finally, Dell has a pen that you can use with the touchscreen. Let me know if this is something you'd want to see in a follow-up video. Moving to the keyboard, I'm sorry to say that I'm not a fan of Dell's Maglev keyboard. The key travel is way too shallow and the activation force is way too high. What does this mean? The keys feel clacky. I can't type on them very quietly or comfortably. 
My wife said she didn't have a problem, but she types very loudly all the time. I wouldn't get this laptop if you intend to use it in class or in meetings as it might annoy your colleagues. So I recommend you try these keys out in a store before you buy. Are the keys better than Apple's butterfly keys? Well, yeah, but I do like how the function keys are reversed by default, keys are backlit, and the power button function is a fingerprint sensor though. The precision trackpad is another story. The smooth glass texture feels great. The cursor movements are very accurate and are at the top for Windows trackpads. Windows gestures work flawlessly as well. If Apple was a 10 out of 10, Razer was a 9.5 out of 10, then this trackpad would be a 9 out of 10. And that's only because the diving board style physical click seems to have a rattling noise that worries me. It could just be on my unit, but it's still there. So I have to talk about Dell Mobile Connect. I'm definitely gonna do a separate video on the topic, but let me just say in this video, way to go, Dell. So what is the software? It allows you to send text messages from your Windows laptop even if you have an iPhone. That's right, as an iPhone user, I can finally text people using a full-sized physical keyboard without needing a MacBook or iPad. You can also get notifications, transfer files, photos and videos, and even mirror your phone's screen to your laptop if needed, which is great, but man, this might convert a lot of people stuck in the Apple ecosystem to Dell. Very exciting stuff. So does it just work? No. Are there bugs? Yes. Do I still recommend it? Absolutely. The more people who use the software, the more Dell will know people are interested in it and improve it. So now let's finally talk about that CPU performance. How does the new 11th gen Intel Core i5 1135G7 perform compared to last year's 10th gen? I'm very excited to say that there's almost a doubling of CPU performance as the Geekbench 5 score jumps from the 3000s to the 5000s. That said, the Core i7-1065G7 from last year is no slouch. So if you care only for CPU performance, don't need XC graphics, and can find a good deal on it, then go for it. And now we finally made it to the GPU, the latest Intel Iris XE graphics. Is it more powerful than the NVIDIA GTX 1650? No. Are people having driver issues in games? Yes. Do I still recommend it? Absolutely. And here's why. The graphical performance in this year's XPS has more than doubled over last year and places this laptop on par or even slightly more powerful than the Ultra Portables with NVIDIA's NX350. Is the Razer Blade Stealth still twice as powerful? Yes, but that laptop is slightly heavier and isn't a 2-in-1 convertible. But how does this laptop perform in games? With low settings at 720p resolution, Grand Theft Auto V ran between 30 and 60 FPS depending on how demanding the scene was. The good news is that it never dropped below 30 and it was always stutter free. Doom ran between 40 and 70 FPS, it's very playable, not so much with a trackpad, but yeah, regardless, I only saw one stutter, but then it was very smooth. If you locked this game at 30 FPS, I bet you'd be very happy. Tomb Raider's benchmark averaged at 118 FPS, but would dip down into the 70s during graphically intensive moments. And finally, Witcher 3 would get 40 FPS with some serious stutter, but locking the FPS to 30 seems to fix this issue. So yeah, I would say that all games are playable at low settings, 30 FPS, 720p resolution. Additionally, I didn't see any thermal throttling during any of these tests. The dual fan and ultra thin vapor chamber keeps the temperatures in the 60s, and no, they aren't loud, high pitched, or annoying. You can hear them during intensive tasks like gaming, but in all other situations, they are dead silent. But yeah, if you want a game with higher settings, I highly recommend a clamshell laptop with an NVIDIA GTX or RTX series card like the Razer Blade Stealth or Zephyrus G14. See links to those video reviews in the description below or up above. But then there are the graphical issues during games using these XE graphics. Online, people are claiming that textures won't load, some objects will have the wrong colors, and that the games will sometimes crash when trying to load a new level or a previous save. For me, I didn't have any of these issues. My only problem was that I would intermittently lose signal to my external monitor through the Thunderbolt 4 ports. Nothing I did could fix the issue. Updating through Windows Update and downloading the latest drivers and firmware through Dell didn't resolve the problem. Even going directly to Intel to download their latest Intel Iris XE graphics driver didn't fix the problem. My take is that an update to the XE graphics drivers will someday fix all of these issues, but that day has not arrived. What about professionals out there who need to use CAD programs like SOLIDWORKS? The benchmark got stuck on closed SOLIDWORKS and wouldn't start the second pass. 
That said, the first pass seemed to be pretty quick. As a result, I would say this laptop could be perfectly capable for simple parts and small assemblies, but for your complex designs, I recommend something a little beefier. And what about the battery life? It's superb. The 51 watt hour battery is rated for 14 hours, but for my workflow, I see closer to nine, which isn't bad at all. So yeah, no complaints with regards to the battery life. So what do I recommend? Is there a better laptop out there? If you need a laptop with a reversible hinge, in my opinion, the XPS 2-in-1 is king. Sure, the HP Spectre X360 is now out with very similar specs, but I don't know. I've always had better luck with Dell than with HP. But what do you guys think? Are you having issues with the HP Spectre X360? All this said, if you need graphical power and don't need a 360 degree hinge, then there are some seriously more powerful alternatives with full GTX and RTX graphics cards. The Razer Blade Stealth and Asus Zephyrus G14 come to mind. You might have to sacrifice low weight and Thunderbolt ports, but these are the top light clamshell laptops on the market at this time. What about MacBooks? Does this thing perform better than any 13 inch MacBook Air? You bet. What about any 13 inch MacBook Pro? Again, absolutely. With both a better single core and multi-core performance in Geekbench 5, the 11th gen Intel processors are no slouch. And with double the graphical performance, the 2020 XPS is the clear winner if you want to game. But if you're locked into Apple's ecosystem, you'll have to wait for Apple Silicon. In conclusion, should you buy this laptop? If you want one of the best 2-in-1 convertibles with a 360 degree hinge, one with Intel's latest Iris XE graphics, one that can as a result game, one that weighs only 2.9 pounds, one with a great HDR display, one that allows you to send text messages even if you have an iPhone, one with a great feeling trackpad, one with a multitude of ports including Thunderbolt 4 and a microSD card slot, and one that costs $1,250, then the Dell XPS 2-in-1 9310 is for you. Just remember, you'll have to pay extra for the XE graphics, 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. The keyboard has very shallow and loud keys. It's not user upgradable. It lacks legacy USB type A ports and it comes with bloatware. But what do you think? Is this laptop worth it to you? Is it better than the HP Spectre X360, Razer Blade Stealth, Zephyrus G14 or MacBook Air or Pro? Do you know of any better alternative? Let me know what you think down below and also what you'd like to see me test next. And finally, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel out and I'll catch you in the next one.